Hello and welcome to All and Off the Pitch. It is an interview with Lily Ag, the very hard-working Lily Ag, London City Lioness midfielder, uh, midfield supremo. Lily, welcome. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. It's all right. I'm so glad that we finally, finally <laughs> get to speak to one another. Um, the life of a, what I say is a, a footballer, part-time but full-time and full-time employee <laughs> elsewhere, balancing two worlds in one. How are you finding that? Yeah, thank God it's Friday. <laughs> that that's um that's the feeling every week. Um yeah, I'm you know, it's it's tough. Like I said, I'm trying to juggle full time football essentially and teaching and marking and progress reviews that are due tomorrow and half terms coming up and going back to school and understanding now that we're doing COVID testing and yeah, it's been super hectic to be honest. And Days are flying by. Um, I don't know which I'm losing track of days. That's kind of how it is at the minute. Um, it's so it's a bit, yeah, thank God. But um, no, it's a bit of a weird one. But like I said, it's just, you know, I'm grateful to kind of be in the position I am. Like I said, other people are struggling with what to do day to day. I'm kind of in the opposite and the days are flying by. Um, but yeah, yeah, just ticking by and yeah, another week down, feeling good. So yeah, looking forward to a laying in the morning. Yeah, oh, well, okay. Well, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> Um, you currently play for London City Lionesses, okay, and you're you play in midfield. I've seen you play quite a few times this season, um, but you, you're not a Londoner, are you? you? You're held from the coast. What part of the coast are you from? Yeah, I'm from Brighton, down south. Ooh. So, so what caused you to move into the, the big smoke, as they call it? Um, like I said, I've kind of always just moved my life around football, really. So when I was young, obviously, growing up playing at Brighton, um, went then to Arsenal Academy. So that kind of moved me to Hertfordshire way. Um, and then I moved back to Brighton to go to university. Um, so I moved back to kind of my hometown, could live at home again, which was was nice. Um, and then, yeah, since then, I've kind of just moved to where football has taken me. So like I said, I ended up in Germany, um, back to Charlton, which was London based. Um, and then, yeah, now at London City, which again is kind of London area. So just kind of always following football and trying to be a team where, like I said, I feel I'm progressing and pushing myself and football is kind of the priority. Um, so, yeah, that that's always the reason as to where I end up and my location. That's all right. So even though you're from the coast, definitely London is is a key factor in your footballing career. Obviously, you say Arsenal and Charlton. Um, you know, I, I primarily know you from being, at, you know, London City Lionesses. What is it about this team that you like? Oh, there's, well, like I said, there's quite a lot for me. I think, you know, what appealed, um, and I think to most of the girls when we kind of started this journey was the unique factor in the sense that, you know, Diane, the chair lady, has great visions and, you know, it's a standalone club and wanted to kind of go along. Um, and like you said, she's kind of put her own stamp on things with pride and what lionesses represent um, and so on. And since then, I think the, the club has set up very well in terms of, like you said, we are technically part time, but it's almost like a full time schedule. We're quite well looked after in terms of, you know, we are training at two o'clock most days. We're, you know, based at Dartford at Princess Park, nice facilities. We get fed after training, we can shower and stuff there. Um, so it's got a really professional feel. Um, which really appeals to me. We're there five days out of seven, which again is like a full-time schedule. Um, all I want to do is play football. So the more I can, the better. Um, and then obviously since being at the club, like you said, things have really, for me personally, been a lot better this year. Like you said, I broke my leg last year and was out for the whole first season. So kind of all the excite excitement of joining um, to then have kind of the heartbreak of breaking my leg and being out for the whole season and kind of coming to terms with that and the big injury and how to get back and am I going to be okay and am I going to be the same player and, and getting over all of that. So now, like you said, really kind of relishing playing week in, week out, um, having Mel kind of taken over and she's really helped uh, enhance my game um, really enjoying playing under her and kind of what she's bringing to London City in terms of our culture um, so yeah there's there's lots to like about London City and like I said I feel it's a really good environment and yeah it's it, it's probably the best football I've been playing for for a while like I said and to come back from such big injury and feel as fit as, as I do and strong as I do and to you know be playing consistently is um, a really big positive for me also. 
Yeah, I would. I, you know, like I said, I've watched you play, your team play quite a few times. You, you've taken some hits. <laughs> you've taken some hits. And there was one particular game, I think you took at least two or three hits in, 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 all, in sequence. And I thought, <laughs> she's not going to continue, but you did continue. And you just seemed to, you just, well, I'd say got angry. <laughs> what's the word? What's the word I'd like to use? You got angry. It, it was a very good game, a very good performance from you. But um, you, you mentioned about, you know, what Mel has done for you as a player. You know, I mean, she had to take over from the previous manager. Obviously, she's been there now for a while and she's put in her stamp on the team. But you say that she's done something for you. What, what is it that she's done for you? Um, she, For me personally, I think she's changing me um, as a player as well in the sense that off the pitch. So a bit like you said, I'm, I'm you know, I, I play with my heart on my sleeve. I'm, you know, my last name's Ag. Uh, I'm nicknamed Aggie because, you know, I when I play football, I'm, I'm at battle. I'm ready for war. Essentially. I, I will put my body on the line. I will give everything that's left in my body, you know, 110%. And that's kind of how I've been, you know, taught to play since growing up. And, and that's why I love the game. And I think like you should always play every game, like it's your last and give your all. And, you know, you should never come off unless you physically can't stay on. You know, I think when I was younger, I broke my arm and played on, I broke my nose and played on. That's just kind of in my nature. Um, but for me, Mel really helps in terms of recognising where I can develop off the pitch as well as on the pitch in terms of my character, in terms of leadership, um, in terms of cultivating me and making me recognise. And like you said, I, I'm trying to be a less frustrated figure on the pitch and be somebody who's less angry and kind of, you know, less expectations and, and try and just kind of focus on myself. And um, when you focus on yourself and you don't let, you know, other things that happen in the game dictate your game, I think I then play better football. Um, so that's really helped me. And I think, like you said, Mel, has really helped me off the pitch in terms of kind of understanding of life and kind of life perspectives and yeah, different things for me to kind of think about from a different point of view rather than just how I see it. Um, and it, like I said, it helps me build relationships. It helps me build kind of just as a person. Um, so yeah, I'm really grateful for, for that off the pitch as well as like I said, on the pitch in terms of everyday training sessions that she plans and, and so on. Yeah. You know, when you said, you know, you, you, <laughs> she wants you to be a better person off the pitch, but also to focus on your own game. You know, the ang I used the word angry. I didn't realise that was actually how you were playing the game sometimes. So I apologise if, <laughs> if, if I've, I've touched on a nerve. But no, you did in that game particularly um, improve after a couple of uh, heavy challenges. But it's nice to hear uh, about what the manager is doing for you um, as a player on the pitch but also off the pitch and how she's trying to kind of hone your game in a way where you're not caught up with the other sequence of events that are taking a place around you but basically win your battles your own yes, personal for battle. sure. yeah you know that's that's the, the key thing um you know obviously you say you work full-time and you work you train part-time and you, you you say you do the best and you, you, you're living obviously the best life you're playing the best football but it isn't easy it isn't easy, you know, the, the championship in the league that, that, that you are in the, and your, your fellow colleagues are in is a tough league. It's, it's, a, very, it's a very, very difficult league. I, you know, any, any day, any given game day, you're going to come up against an opposition that's quite difficult to play against, difficult, probably very much the same mindset that you have. You know, you work all week and you're playing your football and you love to play the football. What would you do if you were given the opportunity to be a full-time professional, would you say no, you know, because you like the, the lifestyle balance that you have, or would you say yes and throw yourself into it wholeheartedly, knowing that um, it may not be forever in a day? Um, look, like you said, I, for me, the goal is to always play at the highest level for, for football. That is always the goal. I think, you know, decisions for me and like I said, even heading into next year is, you know, what does that that level look like in the sense of, you know, realistic? You have to be realistic. Your, your top teams, for example, say I look at the league above in your WSL, you know, your Chelsea's, your Arsenal's, your Man City's, you know, when they're 
buying players from abroad at so you know it's not really an option it's that in your dreams it is but it's never really going to be an option so in regards to kind of thinking of WSL you, you you know realistic wise you have to look at the teams that are at the lower the the lower league and like I said I've you know I played WSL for Bristol um and that was a great experience but again do I think Bristol is a higher level than London City um technically yes in terms of the league but again for me personally I don't know if the move again would you know why would I move my whole life to Bristol for for me what I feel maybe isn't a step up if that makes sense and I mean you touched upon it earlier I think the championship is an incredibly tough league um top can beat bottom bottom can beat top and I think for me I enjoy the competitiveness of week in week out you know no games easy and not saying that the WSL isn't as competitive of course it is and what a great league to be in but I think for me there's a big divide in the WSL and the top league um, and I think for me I'd rather play championship but be in a team where I'm competing every single week um, for the top league and for championships and to be winning as opposed to potentially being a, a team in the WSL but maybe you know scraping by and kind of you know trying to to stay afloat essentially um because for me I want to enjoy football and to enjoy football you want to enjoy winning um and so on so I think it really does depend in terms of circumstances and clubs and things like that you know of course the goal is to play full-time football everyone wants to play at the highest level but I think your environment and surrounding um is also really important and like I said I'm very happy at the minute at London City um your manager has a massive part your culture your club you know, and things like that. And for me, like I said, London City does at the minute, you know, tick all of those boxes. So tough one. You can never say never um, and no idea what obviously the future holds. Um, but yeah, at the minute I'm, you know, happy where I am. <laughs> that's, right. well, that's good to hear. I'm sure um, <laughs> your manager's happy you said that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can send her this after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, do that. Um, you talked about, you know, obviously Bristol, you know, you played there and it's WSL, but, you know, in terms of them being a bigger club in terms of where they are right now, but not necessarily in terms of the football. I, I, I do understand that. Maybe next year, that depending on where they finish in the league, you might play them. <laughs> uh, so, so, so there is that. With the transfer rumours that sometimes happen around the, the WSL clubs, do any of you or do you or any of your, your, your player colleagues say, oh, I wonder if, some of the big clubs are looking at lower uh, at our team for players. You know, do do they do, do you think that sometimes someone will go, oh yeah, we know that the WSL club is looking at you. Would you move? And you've already kind of answered the question with, with regards to Bristol. But ju just say, for example, Spain, you know, someone came along, another London club came in, you know, mm -hmm. Arsenal came in for you, you, Spurs came in for you, um, Chelsea came in. For you. Would, would you what would you do? Would you say no, or would you say? I, I'm happy where I am because I know I'm going to play. Yeah, do you know what? It's one of them. I think, like you said, if it, you know, I mean, no, any, I think any player at London, if, if a club like Arsenal, Spurs even, you know, were to come in and, and want you, I think, you know, somebody who wants to be a footballer full-time, I think they wouldn't say no to that. I think they would want to push themselves in that league. And for me, I've always, you know, taken on a challenge and tried to always push myself and, you know, that's something if that ever did come along again, I think I would, you know, love to kind of accept the challenge and, and push myself. And, you know, I think, you know, I've, I've played at like I said, various level I've, when I played at Bristol in the in the summer league. I think, you know, when I was playing against your teams like Chelsea, Arsenal, you know, I do think there is a very small margin between the top WSL league and, for example, championship or even WSL. I think, you know, don't get me wrong, there's some unbelievable world class players in the WSL. There really are. Um, but I also think, like you said, there are more than enough players in the championship that could easily play at WSL level. Um, so it's something that, you know, I would never say never. Um, you know, I'm always pushing to to play at the top level and I will do my best. And, you know, I do when I'm on top form, I do think, you know, I am good enough to be playing in the WSL. And it's one of them. It's, it's where as you get older, you start to kind of weigh up life and, and so on. And, you know, I'm 27 now. It's not like I'm, I remember being 16, playing for Brighton women first team and, you know, living that dream. But, you know, when you get to 27, you have to think a bit like, bit more about bills and lifestyle and, and so on. And, you know, football essentially has to, 
be a job and alongside another job um, unless you are playing for your Arsenal, your Man Cities and so on and taking home a lovely salary. So again, it all has to kind of weigh up life and, and where you're at. Um, but I'm always taking pay cuts left, right and centre just to play football. That's That's been the story of my whole life. And, you know, it's never about money. It's But when it comes to, like you said, you, you just want to play, you want to enjoy it. And for me, like you said, I'm playing regularly at the minute. I'm playing consistently. Um, and that is what it is about. And, you know, do I want to maybe push one more time and play at top level? If the opportunity was to come around, you know, I don't think I would turn that down. Um, but again, dependent on the club, the situation um, and so on. Yeah, you, you mentioned two things. One about you taking a pay cut, obviously, um, which is kind of, it kind of underlines the point I was trying to get from you and ask the question about you balancing two kind of full-time jobs. You're playing football, but also you have a job elsewhere. Um, and you've, you've had to make difficult decisions in your, what we call normal life, for those that don't play football that, that in, in any kind of professional capacity, for, for a part of your life, which is a big part in terms of what you love, your passion, but also you, you, you are a part-time professional. You've had to make accommodations elsewhere just to do that. With the point that I want to get from you is that back in 2019, you were on Newsnight. You talked about the World Cup and the buzz. Um, and with that buzz, there was an expectation that the game, the game would grow in terms of funding. That hasn't materialised. Would, would you say that the buzz is still there for the women's game in terms of the growth? It, it's a tough one. I, I do, to a degree. But I do, I think that potentially the media, um, women's football in general, are doing enough to keep that buzz going is for me a bit debatable. I think the hard thing is obviously COVID. I mean, it's not an easy time for anyone. It's not an easy time for fans. It's not an easy time for growing the game. Like I said, every mm. lower league, non-league, you know, so many clubs are struggling, let alone the, the effect it has on women's clubs. Um, and we were making great strides forward. I really do believe that. Um, and like I said, the buzz for me, I don't think has gone, but I think maybe the buzz for life at the minute has gone for everyone. You know, there's so much happening. You know, you watch football at the minute on telly and there's no fans and it's such a surreal, you know, people are saying, and this is what I always say in comparison when people talk about men's football to women's football you know when you watch men's football now and there's no fans is it as fun does it look as good are you yeah. noticing more mistakes uh, are you a bit a, bored are you passing by do you know yeah. what I mean and again like people have to then think well actually when you watch a women's football game live on television and there's nobody in the crowds and there's nobody in the stands that is what we have to compete with week in week out when people say oh, it's boring it's slow when you now watch men's games where there's no noise, there's no crowd, it's boring with all respect. It's still quite boring. And don't get me wrong, the standard is still there. But I think we do need to do more when fans are allowed back to promote the games, to understand where they are. Because I always say, you know, why is it when, for example, the Olympics was on and the women's, you know, sold out everywhere and there was 90 whatever thousand sold? There is, there is an audience for it and there are demand. However that's not the case because people don't even know where for example London City play people don't really know where Chelsea ladies play people don't really know where Arsenal women play um or when their games are so for me I think a lot more can be done to promote it and get that buzz back for sure it, it, it seems as if the media have a point to push but also clubs also are doing their bit and fans are doing their bit in their small way but it's not a connected effort it's very much separate, you know, everyone's in their own garden. The fence is quite high, they can hear the noise next door, but they don't necessarily know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, and that, that for me is, is what it is. It's very, very, very kind of telling. Um, I wanna ask you about the league and obviously not just it was you, but you know, the, the team's ambitions and your ambitions for the league going forward. Um, Mid-table-ish, had some good results. What are, what are you aiming for? What are you personally aiming for? I know you've given a hint, but within the team structure and the team goal, what are you aiming for? As in this year? Well, could be this year, could be next year. <laughs> um, no look, time scale think... from me. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I think realistically, like I said, this year, you know, we're, we're just doing the best we can. We're going game by game. We're trying to cultivate off the pitch. We're trying to build heading towards next season. I think, you know, people forget that obviously London City, when we started two years ago, we... You know, we were put together by three, I think, three plus managers ago. You know, we've gone through spells and, you know, we were all contracted at the time to two years. Um, the whole team from two years ago to where we are now. So, again, there's been so many ups and downs within that. There's been, you know, some people starting, some people not starting, different managers in, different managers out. And I think, again, there's going to probably be a lot of change. There's going to be a lot of, you know, again, rebuilding and going in and out. And, you know, no one really knows what that looks like. Again, it's all quite new, probably going to be for everyone. And I think at the minute we're going through a phase of everyone essentially is fighting for their position, fighting for their co new contract if they want them, fighting for, like you said, the direction of London City. And again, I think, you know, we need to know from London City if we're going into next year, if we're going to be a full-time team, because at the minute, I think there's so much, almost, it's unclear messages, because like when I, even when we watched Bat Lewis, you know, on their thing, they were going, oh, you know, in London City, you're a full-time team. And I'm thinking... Well, I'm not full time. I'm definitely not paid full time. I teach more than I am at training, and I still. And so again, it's like I think the important thing for London City and our structure within, and I think there's clubs currently ongoing um, and chats with obviously chairwoman and so on. But you know, are we full time? Are we going to base ourselves on a part time structure or not? Because I think you know when you see teams such as uh, Leicester who have said, right, we're full time this is our budget. We have the best facilities. We're going to buy the players we want. We're going to go for it. You can see when you fully go for it, sort of the rewards. And I think that shows nicely with where they're at currently and um, whether they'll be there end of the season, who knows? But I think that to me shows um, a clear goal, a clear outlay in terms of finances as well as whatever else and a clear kind of target. And again, that's kind of then been achieved. Whereas I think, with us at the time, we were quite unsure on where we going in fully, where we go, what budget should we have? Should we not? Um, and I think, again, it's a bit of a transition, you know, when you start up brand new and you're, you know, a standalone female club, it's tough. There's going to be so much stuff behind closed doors that again, we don't even know about, you know, I don't even know what Diane, Mel, everyone behind London City have to deal with. And I think, you know, it's going to be very interesting. I, I don't know the answers. I'd, love to be told look we're gonna go full-time next year and pay full-time and we're gonna go for it and and so on and you know that would be the ultimate dream and that would be lovely and I could then put my teaching job aside and you know give 110% every day rather than you know me at my struggling 60% because I've been up since 6 30 and and been teaching all morning but you know it's gonna be an interesting couple of months heading into next year and where people are going to be and there might be changes there might not we might have the same squad we might not who knows but I think the ultimate goal from the top which again does push down to players and staff is you know you want to win the league you want to push you want to compete um, and we we are completely recognize that you know maybe it's a bit too little too late this year um, never say never because the league's crazy but you know I think there's four games left five games left um, and we're, I think, you know, a good 10, 13 points or something behind top. Um, so a miracle would be needed. But, you know, we're, we're going to just fight to the end, keep trying to improve, keep trying to cultivate heading into next year um, and shape our squad and so on. And then, like you said, changes and so on off and on the pitch will be out of our hands. And, you know, who, who knows where kind of next year will be or who or where anyone will be, I guess. Well, you know what, I, I have to say, fingers crossed, and obviously because we're talking and it's quite late and you've been up since 6.30, I, I, I'm really, really grateful that you actually are giving me the time because people have no idea what time we're talking. And I'm going to take you to late. If you're up at 6.30, it's late. <laughs> but this, is the, this is the last thing you want to do on a Friday. So I really do, I really do appreciate that you've actually given me the time. I will ask, though, that I get a chance to speak to you again in, in the future when you've got a bit more time, obviously. A hundred percent. And like I said, I'm, you know, don't, you don't have to thank me for the time because again, it's people like you for me who, you know, make the game better and who care about the game and so on. So like I said, 
you know, yeah, I'm tired, but joking aside, you're probably tired. This is your work. You're going out of your way to, 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 to make things happen. And, you know, for me, I think it's so important as a player to, to really respect that. And like you said, you know, my time for that is, is priceless and, you know, you're more than welcome. And like I said, I'm more than happy to talk to you any other time. Like I said, I think it's great what you're doing and I really enjoy it. And well, thank you. I, I mean, I try in my own small way to do, obviously I love watching the games and, you know, I, I try to get to as many as I possibly can and do as many things to promote the championship and, and every team that I've been to see. And, you know, what I will say is that, you know, I, I've been to see you guys a number of times, excuse me, and, and been to see Crystal Palace and London Bees and been down to Lewis. And I'm just kind of like blown away with the talent and the commitment from, from the players that I've seen there. And, um, yeah, you especially, that game, just, <laughs> you just... You just, uh, you just stood out. You just stood out for me. And I just thought, wow, this is someone who definitely wants to win this game and it will run for a brick wall. So, no, um, I, I, appreciate I appreciate that. No, 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 no. I appreciate it. Lot of, there are a lot of good players in your team. You know, I better not say anything because Mel probably will think if I start saying names, WSL teams will start sniffing around. <laughs> so I'm keeping my mouth shut for now. But I, yeah. There are a lot of good players in your team. Um, I, I want to ask you a couple of questions before we go, before I let you go off and relax for the rest of the <laughs> evening or morning as it is, uh, will be soon. Um, there are quite a few London teams in the championship. There seems to be a London derby every other week. <laughs> you know? It feels that way as well. It feels that way, which is good. It's good, but it feels that way. Um, a cheeky question. If there was a um, FAW Championship London Best 11 selected from Palace, Bees, Charlton and yourselves, Lionesses. Who would make the squad from gosh. your team? Gosh, 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 from my team? Yeah. Oof. Because I'm thinking, I, I, I mean, London Bees, I mean, they got some talented players there. You guys, Charlton, Palace, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm sure that if this is me being in my way, trying to promote the game in a really bizarre way, if there was a best 11 from whether it's the championship versus a best 11 from the WSL, what a game that would be. I know, honestly. Do you, do you know what I mean? It's, it, it's tough. Like I can think of, even when I think of, you know, your Charlton, your Bees, your Palace, you know, I could say players off the top of my head that I know for those teams that, for me, I think are great players, you know. Yeah. You've got, I, you know, Charlie Clifford at Charlton, I think unbelievable, played with her natural ability. She, you know, for me, bosses it in the midfield. When I think of Palace at the minute, you've seen Bianca Baptiste on absolute fire. You know, they've got some great players there. You've got, even at Bees, Brooke Nunn for me. Yeah outrageous talent again you know just kind of needs to be seen and you know she's been working so hard and you know there's there's so many players you can pick out I think our team you know we have got again like I said we've got a mix of young players that have outrageous talent like for me Annie Rossiter Lily Percy you know you haven't really seen that much of them so far yet because again they're young up and coming mm. but you know if I'm you know to put my money on it you know England's five 10 years time the the technical ability they both have mm. is outrageous if they can keep their mind set on it if they they can keep working hard keep progressing you know they're in a great setup at London City and and again they're the upcoming players that for me are going to be fantastic I'm lucky enough to actually have coached Danny and um, her talent is just outrageous same as Lily Percy technical both feet can read the game and um, so for me like I said they're unbelievable and they're young up and coming um Atlanta Primus you know such an intelligent player for me I think she reads the game so well she's kind of that one that you think she's almost not working hard because it's so kind of natural and easy um it looks but easy she, for her. It, that's what I mean it just comes across so and she you know she scores for fun and again like you said I I like playing with her very much so um yeah we have so many to be honest I think you know our defense recently has been unreal Shay goalkeeper she's fantastic you know to be honest I I played with a goalkeeper in Germany Brie who was um American very similar to Shay and I remember saying about Brie like 
whoa, like unbelievable goalkeeper. I've not seen a goalkeeper like it. And then now I've met Shay, I'm like, whoa, you two are very, very similar. And, and you know, they are two of the best goalkeepers I've, I've seen. Um, and I think goalkeepers, especially in women's football, are, are very tough to find a very good goalkeeper. Um, and I see that week in, week out with Shay as well. Um, she's fantastic. And like I said, our defence has been brilliant. You know, Harley, for me, Bennett is, you know, she is great at centre-back. She bosses, you know, her experience shines through. Um, she can dribble out. She can win 50-50s. Again, another player who, for me, is always up for it, always consistent, um, battles well. Um, I, could, I could go for our team, to be oh, honest. No, we do have, you know what? That's, <laughs> it, it's so hard. Like, I could, you know, we actually had to do a task not that long ago, um, and Mel actually made us all do a task and write down basically a good thing about each player. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you know, you can you can state so many good things about each player and kind of what they represent and, and you know, their role within the team. Um, and we do. We have, so, we have so many different players that do bring so many different qualities. And again, like I said, you know, our starting eleven does ch- change because we have such depth. But that's football. And like I said, there are so many talented players out there. Um, a London derby, I really couldn't pick like I said there's even when I think of other clubs I think there's so many players that I'd love to play with and have played with before that I'd love to play with again and and so on and so yeah it's hard if you if you actually one day I might write you down an actual full 11 from I all want, the London I clubs want, I want you but to. you can't post it anywhere I'll have a few <laughs> upset people like you can't post it anywhere but I'll be truthful all right then we'll, we'll do that I won't post it anywhere to, to the follow-up question to that would you be in the best 11 I don't think I can answer that myself. That's something I'd have to ask for, for teammates and peers and people I play against to, to to tell me. It's one of them, isn't it? Football, what can you say? Football's a game of opinions. You know, the people I maybe have just listed, other people might be listening and say, cool, like, I don't rate them. Then, you know, really, really? And that is what football's about. You know, you watch me and you think I've stood out and played well. Someone else might say, oh, nah, she's average. She's all right. No, not that good. Like, that is football. Um, yeah. I'd like to hope I'd be in that, but again, that's you know, that's that's football for you. So depends who you're asking, I guess that question is. Well, I might tweet out the question and tag you <laughs> in. <laughs> oh, I'll God. retweet it. Yeah, we we'll tweet it. Right, I want to say a few final questions. Um, best footballing quality for you. What is it? What is in what I think I have or yeah. Um, I think I would say my compete my competitiveness Mm -hmm. I think yeah I think you know like technically and so on I think I always kind of go by the fact that if I'm to play a game I could miss 10 open goals but I'm still going to compete I'm still going to put my body on the line I'm still going to give 110 percent um and I think that's what I will always give I'd like to think I am more than just somebody who can compete and I do think sometimes I can turn up and do some good stuff on the ball as well and so on but yeah I think that for me I think lots of people always say you know I'm very hard working and and kind of drive the team and kind of help make the team tick so I think that's probably my best quality okay and one last question what is it that you hate about losing oh gosh I I ask myself this all the time like oh we have it in training and I this is what I can't deal with and like I, t- I don't know how it how I've been brought up how I've been right re- I can't stand losing like when I lose if I lose on a Sunday my whole week is ruined I can't sleep on a Sunday night I think over the game 101 times what could have like what could have done better why did we lose what and I'm the same in training like we literally do say if we do five aside I have head loss if we lose and it's just purely because I just there's no worse feeling for me like I would rather hurt myself body on the line whatever it is than lose and I don't know there's not that many people like that these days and whether it's a good or a bad thing I need to rein it in sometimes because then like you said I can you know, come across personal and lose my head and maybe a few swear words. But to me, it's all about winning. And, you know, that's that's in life. That's in general. I think, you know, you've got to strive to to want to win and, and to be better. And yeah, I don't know that I, I can't put a finger on what it is. That is the worst part about losing. But I just know that it stays with me for longer than 24 hours when I lose. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I asked that question because I saw you when you were on the sideline once and you've given the linesman, or shall I say the assistant referee, a few choice words. That's all. <laughs> nice thought, ones, oh. probably. I oh. think I often say to the line, oh, do you want my glasses? Do you want my contact <laughs> yeah. lenses? That's it. I say it cheekily. I say it lighthearted. Yeah, yeah. Well, you definitely did say something which made me laugh and a few <laughs> others around. I want to say thank you again. Really, I really appreciate you spending the time and uh, just sharing with me and the others who are listening to this fantastic interview uh, right now. Uh, that was, or this is, should I say, Lily Ag, uh, London City Lionesses midfield dynamo maestro. Is that right? One or the other. I'll take both. You'll take no, both. thank you very much for your time, Rodney. Honestly, really appreciate it. Great guy. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much and we'll definitely see you soon and that's it for now from the pod we'll be back with another interview very very soon I'm going to ask Lee who else can I interview from her team and anyone else in the league we'll see you very soon bye for now